Hello, today we're going to look at adaptations of the breathing system. Here we have a simplified diagram of the lungs in the body. The first thing to remind ourselves is that the whole point of the lungs is to bring in oxygen, bring in oxygen so it can be absorbed by the blood, and to remove carbon dioxide. To remove carbon dioxide from the body. Remember, oxygen is really important, really important in the body because it's needed for a process called respiration. Oxygen is needed for respiration, so we must have that brought into the body. And carbon dioxide, this is a waste product from respiration. It's a waste product from respiration, so it needs to be removed from the body. So it's very important that we are constantly bringing in fresh oxygen and constantly removing carbon dioxide. Remember, all cells in the body need oxygen. So every single cell in the body needs oxygen and they all produce carbon dioxide from respiration. If we were being technical, we'd say from aerobic respiration. So this whole process is really, really important. And bringing in, bringing in oxygen and removing carbon dioxide has a name. We call this gas exchange. Gas exchange. So you could say that the job of the lungs in the body is that of gas exchange, bringing in oxygen and removing carbon dioxide. So an important key term there for us to highlight. So let's take a slightly more detailed look, at a slightly more accurate version of the lungs. We're going to look at the adaptations of the breathing system. By adaptations, we mean features that help the lungs or make the lungs good at gas exchange. Features that make the lungs good at gas exchange. Before we do that, let's label the key parts of the lungs. So here we've got the um, actual lungs here, two of them. And then bringing air into the lungs, we have a specific or a special tube called the windpipe. The science word for that is trachea. I suppose they're both science words in a way, but trachea is the slightly fancier one. The windpipe brings air in and it branches off into two other tubes and these are called the bronchi if you've got one of them if you've got one of them a single one it's called a bronchus a bronchus if you have more than one it's bronchi now for the other labels we have to actually slice the lungs in half here so let's get rid of that top layer and look at the details inside so what we have are some smaller tubules some smaller tubes these are called the bronchioles so these are smaller tubes that carry air in these are the key labels for the lungs now that's not all because we have another feature that's slightly trickier to see so let's just bring that out make it a bit larger so we can see it a bit more clearly and this is found at the end of all those bronchioles, and this is called an alveolus. Alveolus. And this is where the gas exchange actually happens. You can see that it's very well supplied with blood vessels. Let's just make a note here. Al the alveolus is where gas exchange happens. Gas exchange. Okay, and you can see that there is a good supply of blood around the alveolus. So let's just make a note there. We've got a blood supply in the term in terms of blood vessels which supply the alveolus. Now we can actually do a slightly simpler version of this diagram just to help us understand it a bit better. So let's just simplify that diagram. Imagine we've got a simple version and we've sliced it in half. It might look a little something like this. So this is a simple version of an alveolus. 
a simple alveolus. Let's compare the two side by side so we can see the adaptations a bit more clearly. So here's our alveolus on the left, a slightly more accurate version of what it looks like, and the simple on the right. One of the first adaptations is that we have a large blood supply. This is so that we can carry away lots of oxygen and remove lots of carbon dioxide. So in other words, carry away the oxygen to the body and remove carbon dioxide from the body. This means we've got more or we've got faster gas exchange because we've got a large blood supply. So if you imagine we've got fresh air coming into the lungs, when we breathe in, the oxygen in that air will diffuse into the blood and the carbon dioxide from the blood will diffuse into the airspace so it can be breathed out. That's why a large blood supply is very important. If you look at the shape of the alveolus, you'll also notice that it has a large surface area. The way it's shaped gives it a large surface area, which means we can increase the amount of gas exchange that goes on. If you've got more surface area, you've got more surface to absorb oxygen or remove carbon dioxide. So a large surface area is also very important. We also have the fact that there are millions of alveoli in the lungs. The word alveoli is when we have more than one, that's plural. So we have millions of alveoli, so each one has a large surface area, but if we have millions of them, we have even more surface area for gas exchange to happen. So that's not another adaptation. One more adaptation we have is to do with the actual width or the thickness of the walls of the alveolus. So if we look at the wall of the alveolus there, it is very thin. The walls of the alveoli are very thin. This means there is only a short distance, a very short distance, for oxygen and carbon dioxide to travel. We could actually use the word diffuse there. So there's a short distance for the oxygen and carbon dioxide to diffuse in and out of the lungs. Better gas exchange. Okay, so there we have it. These are the main features or the main adaptations. A large blood supply, large surface area, thin walls, and the fact that we have many millions of alveoli for more surface area. So there we have it, the key adaptations of the breathing system that make it good at gas exchange. Quite a lot to go through. Um, if you wanted to download the note sheets to work along with the, video, with the video, you can. They are found in the description below. But other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.